king in a ceremony full of music and symbolic moments. Uh, while we leave the Westminster Abbey, we will definitely see the royal family at the balcony as they leave the uh, Westminster Abbey in the, the Gold State coach. We're expecting to see an appearance by members of the royal family on the balcony of Buckingham Palace and also also expecting a military fly past while we watch this beautiful moment. Let's bring in our guest, Bola Adediron, lecturer of politics and international relations, Liverpool Hope University. It's good to have you stay with us. I know you've been with us since morning, since this beautiful event started. First, let me get your reactions as to what you've seen and how Britain is holding tradition in the midst of, in the 21st century, in the midst of modernity. Well, uh, as you've been showing, it's a, it's been a ceremony full of significant um, symbolism. It's been, a, uh, it's been a coronation that has upheld tradition, a thousand year tra tradition. And uh, there, are, there have been emotional moments um, throughout the ceremony, particularly uh, after the crowning of uh, King Charles and uh, um, uh, Prince William, who is uh, the Prince of Wales, was also pledging his allegiance to uh, to the new king. And there was this tender father son moment in that in that um, in that particular uh, episode. So throughout, we've seen all uh, an attempt to uphold tradition. We've seen the uh, the importance and the significance of the church as as king king charles is not only um uh, the king of uh, of england uh, wales uh, scotland and northern ireland but at the same time he's also the head of the church the church of england and and you could see throughout the ceremony the importance placed on that relationship between a monarchy and the church uh, but I, but I think that there, there has been, uh, it, it has been definitely a beautiful ceremony to watch. Uh, but there are larger questions, as I was saying earlier, uh, about the, the the relevance of the monarchy in the twenty first century. I think there is no, you can you can prime and and make it look as beautiful as as possible. But those questions are still there. But whether the monarchy is still relevant in in this time and age. I think one point that you just raised is something that happened at the coronation ceremony, which was the pledging of allegiance. I know that has been pretty controversial, the controversial public homage, you know, that uh, took place in Westminster Abbey, which has been a controversial issue for uh, some time now. I want to ask you, why is it, why is there so much controversy on that? Well, I think that the controversy lies with the fact that it at the uh, at the big at first when it was suggested it uh, it it appeared that um, people were being requested it was there was a sort of demanding tone to it the people had to pledge allegiance and swear allegiance to the king and don't forget that there are, there is a swelling support for republicanism in the UK now even though that is still in the sizable mi minority about uh, the even though it's still a minority, but it's a size growing and sizable minority. So I think that the forces of republicanism and just the discomfort around swearing allegiance and being requested to swear allegiance to the king was particularly distasteful for a lot of people. And there are also parts of the UK, particularly at a Liverpool area, especially the north of, uh, of England, who do not have the same sort of affection for the monarchy as other parts of the UK feel. And for for, for that part of the country, uh, you know, it you know, the idea that they will be requested to swear allegiance to the monarchy was just something that it could could not take. And, uh, and I think that was a slight change in tradition there because mm -hmm. previously, as you may be aware, what happened was that the oath of allegiance was often taken by leading aristocrats. Uh, so uh, like long peers uh, would form a long line and swear allegiance to the king, and they were the representatives of people. But uh, as part of this attempt to sort of modernize the monarchy and to give the impression that, you know, uh, the monarchy was now of the people, uh, it was suggested that people watching from home or watching in pubs, watching all around the country would be asked for 
for that moment of uh, of connecting with the king and feeling that they are part of the ceremony. But of course, that has been um, that that resulted in some black backlash, as you rightly mentioned. Mm, pretty interesting. But as you know, you you if you take a look at how many people trooped out just to watch this historic moment. I, I want to understand, if you say that some persons have reservations, we know that there have been protests at uh, the Buckingham Palace, around Buckingham Palace and some other places. Uh, uh, how loved is the king and queen? I know that this particular monarchy has been plagued with various controversies, various uh, scandals and stories, but how loved are they? If you know, if you go sample opinions of people around the United Kingdom. There have been polls that have been uh, recently put out that show that uh, the king's popularity is taking a slight, uh, um, has moved in an upward trajectory. Before, while he was the Prince of Wales, he was not one of the most loved members of the royal family, for sure. And that is because of uh, a long history of scandals that are uh, particularly the old Diana episode and the perception that it not only cheated on Diana with uh, uh, the queen, uh, the, with Camilla, who is now the queen, but also just because of how uh, uh, some of the decisions is taken in the past, and some of those unwillingness, uh, perception that he, he would be a monarch who does not res respect the constitutional limits that uh, have been placed on the monarchy, uh, particularly in terms of the extent to which the monarchy interferes in daily politics uh, and in, in the affairs of the state. There was a scandal that it was, uh, a, um, it was, it was part of in, uh, I think, in the late, under Dr. Tony Blair's government or maybe in uh, uh, Gordon Brown's government, where he sent a memo called the Black Spider Memo, uh, trying in some ways to influence the policies and, um, and the decisions of the government. And when that came out, it was concerning for people because for a lot of British people, uh, the idea of the monarch is just uh, for what is we've seen today, the pomp and the pageantry, the tradition, uh, the historicity, uh, historicity of it, uh, the some symbolism of, of it. And so people have never thought that the monarchy has a significant hold on daily politics. And to see a prince interfere in the daily affairs of the state was concerning. And, and, and so all of those things have made uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles, uh, a, a monarch to be wary of. But I think that since the Queen has died, uh, people are beginning to take to him, but obviously he, is, he has not enjoyed the same groundswell of support that the former Queen had. And she was a very popular monarch by all accounts. Particularly when you consider what he has done in the military and uh, some persons, you know, tag him as the climate change king. Uh, do you think that will go far, if, given how he has interfered in politics and uh, how he has taken on some environmental issues as his personal, for his personal interest? Do you think that will help in shaping this monarchical system? Well, well he is a king that is very concerned about the environment. He is a king that uh, appears to love uh, conservation, the idea of conservation. Uh, um, his children themselves, uh, both William and, and, and Ari, have uh, been involved in conservation efforts. Uh, Prince William, for instance, uh, a couple of years ago started a foundation and, and uh, uh, a $1 million prize uh, money attached to the Edgeshot uh, um, um, uh, the, the Prize, which is are around conservation efforts too. So there is clearly a, a, a willingness to embrace the environment, climate change and environment uh, with this group of royals and this monarchy. But I think that there would be limits. Now that he's king, there would be limits to which he can openly uh, act, you know, engage in activism on this issue. As king, as I mentioned, there are expectations that he's above the fray of politics, he's above uh, the daily uh, discussions of politics and the daily tensions around politics. And of course, climate change, as much as we would want uh, a universal acceptance of the importance of it, there are still political elements around how we address cl climate change and how we take specific policy actions in response to climate change. So climate change itself and the environment are not beyond 
the fray of politics. And if the king begins to interfere on policies of the government, in response to how it addresses uh, some of the issues of the environment, then the king will become unpopular. And so the king has to maintain this neutrality that, it's, uh, that has kept the monarchy uh, um, um, uh, stable for, for thousands of years and um, in the midst of the republicanism that has overtaken the rest of Europe. Let me put you on hold a bit. So let's go back to London just to enjoy some of this because you can hear cheers in the background from the royal fans. Uh, what you're watching right now, you're seeing the king and queen. That's King Charles III and Queen Camilla are being driven in the gold state coach. Only the monarch and their spouse are allowed in, to, dra to travel in this carriage, which is over 260 years old. And this has been used at every coronation since that of William IV in 1831. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting fact is that it is heavy, it weighs about four tons to be exact, and it requires eight horses to pull it. And so what you're seeing now is about 4,000 armed forces personnel involved in this procession as the coronation procession, which, would, which is taking the king and queen from Westminster Abbey to the Buckingham Palace. Uh, where they would dare on, go on to the balcony and to greet the crowd, the royal fans, and also we're going to have the military fly past. Uh, from the background there, you could see the royal fans donned in some sort of raincoats, prepared, um, prepared, prepared for the British weather. Um, pretty interesting, um, Bola, that um, despite the fact that the weather seems to have a different plan for today, for today's events, Royal fans came out prepared just to show their love. Oh, there are loads and loads of crazy <laughs> royal fans, uh, fans uh, as you've shown in, in some of the pictures and the, the videos that you have. There. Some of them have been camping outside of Buckingham Palace for days now on hand. And some of them even as, as far back as a week or two weeks. Uh, so, yes, the, the weather, typical British weather, weather um, it's been sunny for a couple of days, but, you know, you cannot be absolutely sure what you, you're ever going to get. And today it's been raining. And in spite of the rain, in spite of the, 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 the damp uh, in the weather, people are out there excited about uh, the significance of the moment for them. As I said, even though there are people who are really protesting and, uh, and uh, carrying banners, this is not my king, this is not my queen, abolish the monarchy. There are still thousands and hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions of people out in the streets across the whole country celebrating today and, and embracing uh, the momentous occasion for them. Uh, and, and it's a beautiful thing to see people happy in some ways. Um, a, a lot of persons will think, why are we showing this? Uh, mm -hmm. If you take a look at the Commonwealth nations and the impact of the of British, uh, Britain on Commonwealth nations and uh, how important this is for us as Africans and, and as Nigerians. We understand uh, President, President Mohamed Buhari is also, uh, also went to the United Kingdom just to witness this moment. Uh, we've seen a lot of um, hard, high dignitaries, you know, dignitaries also uh, at the event, uh, although the United States president isn't there, his wife and granddaughter at the event. Talk to us about um, how important is the United Kingdom, particularly the British monarch, in the politics around the world and as it pertains to Africa and Nigeria in specific? Well, well one of the um, important areas in which the British monarchy uh, has, has managed to have a role for itself is in terms of the Commonwealth, uh, a member nation that obviously is a relic of, of uh, Britain's colonial past, uh, the 50-something, 50, 50 55-member uh, nation, uh, and the king sits at the, at the helm of the Commonwealth. And there is a sense in which, uh, as Britain has moved away and exited uh, the European Union, there was an expectation that uh, the Commonwealth be begins to replace uh, the, uh, the place that uh, replaced the EU in terms of uh, significance for for, for the UK. I think there were questions at some point um, about uh, the relationship, that historical relationship between Britain and the Commonwealth, and perhaps also very problematic relationship. And we have seen across 
some of the Commonwealth states, also that groundswell support for republicanism in some way. So, uh, some states have removed the, some countries have removed the monarchy, the British monarchy, uh, as the head of state. So I think Barbados, Barbados uh, did a couple, and Bahamas did a couple of years ago. Uh, years ago. And there are uh, um, some suggestions that Australia, Canada may also be taking uh, the next step, and perhaps Jamaica too. So there is uh, some sense in which that uh, King Charles may be uh, may be the last monarch who acts as the official head of the Commonwealth. And if the Commonwealth survives, then it will be a sort of the head of the Commonwealth will, will be chosen among member states. And those are the kind of conversations going on now. But there is no doubt about it that the, the British monarchy is is, uh, is, a, is a source of uh, spectacle for the rest of the world. Americans love it and they are intrigued by it. They are excited by it. And, and uh, for Africans too, the colonial past in some ways is a source of pain and it's a source of um, um, it's a source of sadness, but at some time, too, as we're seeing, a lot of people find it as a source of spectacle and a source of entertainment. <laughs> a very interesting point. Uh, while we look at it as, while some persons would say it's um, perhaps spectacle and entertainment, we of course enjoy the news that we get from the royal family from time to time <laughs> with questions of where Prince Harry would sit, if it would be at the procession. You know, that came up even before today. Uh, but if you take a look at how um, Prince William and um, the king now, King Charles, particularly that moment where it was paying homage to the king, what sort of um, role do you think King Charles would be playing now that is king and what sort of role do you think he will play also as father because of the dynamics we see in the royal family with Prince William and Prince Harry, you know, Prince Harry going his own way away from the royal family? Do you think he'll be able to match up that role as king and also father? I think he, 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 he has to uh, make some effort. By all accounts, it, it seems like he, he is a father that he is a, an individual who loves uh, his, his sons. I mean, even I have read... Um, Ari's autobiography, The Spare. And um, if there was anything that I got from that autobiography was that Ari loves his father deeply and, 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 and uh, he also believes that his father loves, loves him so deeply and they have a, a fantastic uh, sort of very emotional relationship. Uh, of course, that emotional relationship was, was as a result of a tragedy, was also partly uh, um, uh, burnished by the, the, the kind of um, tragedy that the boys ex 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 experience with the death of their mother and under terrible circumstances in Paris. Uh, but I think that despite all the scandals that came from uh, Prince Harry's uh, exit from the royal family, I think that as king, the, the, the King Charles understands that he also has a duty towards Harry as, as, as a father. And you can see that at, at least in the news, that there was some effort made by the king to ensure that his son comes for the coronation. Now, there were obviously some um, reports coming out saying that Ari may not have, was planning not to attend. And he made, he made personal entreaties towards Ari to ensure that he was there for the coronation, even though he has not played any significant part in the coronation ceremony itself. So I think that as a father and as, as many people across the world can probably relate to, uh, there is that, regardless of your duty as monarch, there is that personal relationship that you will always have, you know, with your boys. And I'm sure that he will be looking for all ways to ensure that uh, the wounds are healed and the, the nerves are, um, are less frayed. Of course, this is pretty interesting because, you know, we had Queen Elizabeth, a woman who brought in our own flavor you know, to, uh, to being queen and mother at the same time. Now we have a king, a man, King Charles. And based on the controversies with Queen Camilla, I know that people have said that Queen Camilla has this sense of humor and is a pleasant person, if you, know, if you, get, if you get close to her. Um, I want you to help us better understand what would differentiate Queen Elizabeth to King Charles with respect most... to being queen, mother, and then king father. 
I think that the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth had a reputation for being uh, someone who uh, was really taken by a duty, took her duties very seriously. There was a particular occasion where um, I read that uh, the Queen had gone on a long journey and came back. Uh, and while she was being greeted uh, at the tarmac, uh, Prince Charles, as a boy, ran up to the, to the mother and the Queen uh, was reportedly uh, very cold in his response to Prince Charles. And and it, the boy was very disappointed because he had missed his mother for so long. But the king, the queen also recognized her position as a, as a monarch and as a duty. And at that time, in front of the, in front of uh, uh, the public, she had to maintain a sort of set, a certain sense of, of boundaries between her and her children. Um, I think that we might see less of that uh, in terms of posturing from Queen, uh, King Charles. And we saw that very clearly, as I said, in, in the coronation where, uh, where Williams was uh, pledging his allegiance and uh, the king was saying, thank you, William, a mountain. Thank you, William, to his, to, to his son uh, uh, in, in, a, in a very tender moment. So we will see a sudden shift in that sort of dynamic. And we've seen, obviously, reports of King Charles um, at the, after the death of uh, Queen Elizabeth talking to his sons in the garden of Windsor, telling them that, you know, he hopes that they get along and they make his uh, remaining years on earth as pleasant as it could be. So he is quite an emotional person by all accounts. And he might uh, and he's also obviously an older person now who has come onto the throne in a different circumstance. Uh, so I think that he will uh, continue. He will probably be quite different from his from his mother, who by all accounts was was quite standoffish with with our children, with the exception of Andrew, as as we've been told. And listen back in. I want you to please just be on standby for us. Uh, as we get back to you so that we can enjoy some of the pictures that are coming live from London. You see the, the Gold State coach uh, carrying the King Charles and Queen Camilla right there on the screen uh, from Westminster Abbey to Buckingham Palace. That's you see Princess Anne there donned in a military attire just behind the Gold State coach carrying King Charles and Queen Camilla. We've seen very interesting dignitaries at this event from celebrities to heads of states and government to uh, politicians from China uh, from various places around the world and from what you see on the screen uh, we're seeing a procession the coronation procession from Westminster Abbey to the Buckingham Palace and they'll be there in a moment from now we've seen thousands of royal fans lined up but that's just that's what you see in that picture there uh, we see them just waiting to catch a glimpse of the royal couple. And uh, only the monarch and spouse are allowed to travel in the carriage. That's the Gold State Coach, which is uh, over 260 years old. Uh, it has been used at every coronation since that of William IV in 1831. It weighs four tons, to be exact, and requires eight horses uh, to carry it. Well, nearly 4,000 UK Armed Forces personnel are information marching in step with each other. Let's take a listen just to enjoy a bit.
Now, the king and queen are at the Buckingham Palace. We have millions of people across the UK and around the world watching the coronation of King Charles III. This is a symbolic moment, certain ceremony combining religion and pageantry. And this is the earlier we've seen the coronation ceremony at Westminster Abbey uh, with the king and queen being crowned. Um, and uh, we're seeing that this has been a day of pomp and pageantry and so much ceremony from religion to tra upholding tradition of the British monarch. And this day has been filled with customs dating back to 1,000 years. We've seen, uh, we just finished watching the coronation procession from Westminster Abbey, where we saw nearly 4,000 UK armed forces personnel in formation marching in step with each other to the Buckingham Palace. Uh, we had just seen the king and queen drive in the goat state coach into the Buckingham Palace, a coach uh, where you only have the monarch and the spouse. They're only them are allowed to drive in the over 260-year-old carriage. Uh, also, we've also seen a number of dignitaries at this event honoring and witnessing this historic moment. That's aside thousands of royal fans that are decorated uh, along the procession routes, which is from Westminster Abbey to the Buckingham Palace. So we've seen almost uh, 2,000, more than 2,000 guests, 2,200 guests uh, at uh, the Westminster Abbey just to witness this moment. Uh, with, in the procession we're, we're seeing now, we're of course seeing uh, armed forces veterans and NHS and social care staff uh, stand outside the Buckingham Palace with thousands of people, you know, viewing along the Mall and Whitehall and various official screening sites across the UK. And uh, what we're witnessing and what we're seeing is King Charles III being crowned king in a ceremony full of music and symbolism in London. Well, the royal couple are back at the Buckingham Palace. It has been customary since the coronation of Edward VII in 1902 for the new monarch to 
with the crowds at the mall from the Buckingham Palace balcony. And we're expected to see that any moment from now. Uh, we're also set to witness six minutes fly past involving members of the Army, Royal Navy, Royal Air Force, and culminating in a display by the Red Arrows. Well, the, Buck the Gold State coach arrived moments ago uh, at the Buckingham Palace. And we expect that the King and Queen with the Royal Family will be at the balcony any time from now. Uh, but in a short time, the day's public celebrations would draw to a close. But just before we continue with this historic moment that we're witnessing, let's bring in our guest. is a lecturer of politics and international relations uh, at the Liverpool Hope University in the United Kingdom, Bola Adidura. Thank you so much for staying through with us to help us appreciate this moment that we're seeing on the screen. So while taking his oath at Westminster Abbey, the King, that's King Charles, had promised to uphold the law during his reign. And it says, it will foster an environment in which people of all faiths may live freely. Talk to us about the inclusive nature, and particularly as we've seen at this event, uh, with the celebrities from entertainment to politics to various controversial individuals at this event, making various statements, fashion statements, and of course, with their presence, making their own statement. Talk to us about the inclusive nature of King Charles. I think that one of the things that Buckingham Palace and the organizers of this uh, coronation event have carefully tried to do is to give that, uh, that veneer of inclusivity that you have just referenced. Uh, there have been people who read, uh, the Prime Minister who read the uh, 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 as one of the Bible readings is obviously an Hindu. Um, uh, there have been uh, officiating ministers who are from um, minority cultures, and and I think all of this is is also a response to uh, so the growing concerns within the society generally that the British monarchy itself is not as inclusive as it could be. Uh, you, you will recall that uh, one of the uh, significant scandals that has rocked the monarchy recently was the lady-in-waiting uh, uh, to, to the former queen, um, who was accused of racism uh, when she touched uh, uh, a, 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 an NGO worker who had come to uh, to the Buckingham Palace for a reception and inappropriately touched her hair and uh, was asking questions about uh, where she, she had come from. And even though, uh, even to, you know, uh, even when the uh, particular person in question was visibly uncomfortable, she kept on uh, uh, make, uh, pressing on the subject. So there have been significant uh, concerns about the nature of the monarchy and how inclusive it is. Even Ari and Meghan accused the uh, the monarchy of being stuck in the past and possibly uh, engaging in uh, racist actions and racist statements uh, are on on their um, born child. So I think all of this are intentional in in terms of trying to show to the world that this is a new era, a new era that recognizes that the, maybe the, the monarchy has not done its best in in terms of embracing people from other cultures and embracing people from other faiths. And this, this coronation, there has been a point, uh, as, as far as I can see, to, to bring those elements into, into, into the whole um, ceremony. It, even the, 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 the choir, I, I think they, we could see one of the um, um, groups that sang at the coronation where was a, an all-black choir, yeah. reminiscent of... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It was oh. a beautiful rendition of Hallelujah. Just go it ahead. was. It was. It was reminiscent of the, the choir, the Kingdom's choir that sang at Ari and Meghan's wedding. So I think that there, there, were, there has definitely been an attempt to, 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 to show a different side to the monarch and what possibly the monarch, the monarchy could be in the 21st century. But I don't think, as a, in my own personal opinion, I don't think all of these things matter enough. I think that, you know, the reality still remain that it, the monarchy is a relic of the past. Uh, and yes, it is good for days like this when we are all bored and we want to see the spectacle and the excitement and we want to, be, we want to get out of the, the, the boring drudginess of our lives. 
But beyond that, there are still questions about meritocracy. There are still, still questions about uh, an institution that is built on hierarchy. Um, and all of these things are important. Oops, I guess we just lost connection with Mr. Bola Adediro. He is a lecturer of politics and international relations at right. Hope University. Oh. Hopefully we'll get him back pretty soon, but let's listen in to what we're seeing in London. That's at Buckingham Palace.
Yeah, we see the king and queen back at the Buckingham Palace to take the honours from the US, the UK armed forces there after a lengthy coronation service, about a two-hour coronation service now, and an elaborate procession through London in the Gold State coach. Uh, we still have our guest, Volade Duro, a lecturer of politics and international relations at the Liverpool Hope University in the United Kingdom with us via a Zoom. It's good to have you join us and stay with us. But I think my final question to you, just before we wrap up this segment, is uh, Britain's support for Monarch, from what you said, is having this long-term decline. Uh, but what will it take to convince the world, you know, to still say that, let's still appreciate this dream world of the monarchy system? I, I don't know whether the rest of the world can be convinced. Um, certainly, there are some countries that are still still have uh, you know uh, still have an appreciation for uh, this you know sort of antiquated system. There are countries like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, uh, Thailand who are, uh, you know who have uh, you know absolute monarchies. And then there are also constitutional monarchies in Denmark, in Spain, and other places of the world. Uh, but I think that, you know, what is beautiful, if there is anything about the British monarch, um, system or the mon British monarchy, is for a day like this, the, the British definitely know how to merge a modernity and tradition together and bring out sort of spectacular uh, um, events like this. I mean, we've... We saw that during the, um, the Queen's uh, Diamond uh, Jubilee celebrations. We saw it at the funeral of the, of the Queen. And we're seeing it at the coronation today. And uh, again, as I said, these are all interesting spectacles that, uh, that have a way of you know, grabbing the attention of the world. But let also know, not also forget, and let us be very clear about it. part of the reason why the rest of the world are interested in what goes on in Britain is because Britain's long history of conquest and colonization across the world that left a trail of blood and tears. We are not, as Nigerians, just only interested in Britain because of, of this event. We are interested because we were conquered and we were colonized and our people were enslaved under the, under, uh, uh, under the direction and the leadership of, of, of Britain. And the British, and British Empire was the, was the biggest empire in history. Uh, you know, by in the early 20s, Britain uh, had conquered, you know, a vast majority of, 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 of the globe. In fact, there are less than 30 countries of, or, or thereabout where Britain has either not colonized, conquered, or invaded at some point. So the attention of the world is, is turned on, on Britain at the moment, partly because we all, in some ways, have been... Uh, 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 invaded, colonized, or in some ways, uh, um, engage. Pardon? I said influenced by their way influenced of government. Influenced by Britain. So, by their policies. I mean, absolutely. And this is why we are interested in what's going on in Britain. So, we, we need to keep, uh, 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 we, we need to keep our, our minds fixed on, uh, on that history also yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, I did do a lecture of politics and international relations. Liverpool Hope University in the United Kingdom, thank you so much for staying through with us in this historic moment.